Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested, and welcome back to Projections, where this week, well, it's time to finally talk about Star Wars Squadrons. I have been looking so forward to this game ever since it was announced earlier this year that this would be return to classic Star Wars dogfighting in video gaming, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, New Republic versus Imperial, and a game that was made from the ground up to also work and be fully playable beginning to end in headset in virtual reality. It's a cross-platform game, so of course it's launching on PlayStation 4, Xbox, as well as the next-gen consoles, and also on PC, and that's what I've been playing it on. On the PC side, you can play with keyboard and mouse, you can play with a gamepad, you can play with a HOTAS, hands-on throttle and stick, but you can also play in virtual reality wearing a headset HMD, and I've been playing it with the Valve Index as well as with the Oculus Quest over Oculus Link uh, with my SciTech X52. This is the game that I built my VR flight simulator cockpit rig to play and boy it's been worth it. So the game comes out actually tomorrow and I have had a chance to go through the expansive single player campaign as well as spend a couple hours in multiplayer dogfights as well as the big fleet battle mode. Uh, but this is not going to be an evaluation of how the game plays with the players in the world at large because it is cross-platform. Console, PC, VR will all be the same pool of players and since the game isn't out yet I can't tell how it's going to play with folks out there, but we're going to talk about how the game works in VR, the scope of the game, the basics of it, and hopefully by the end of this you'll get a good sense of what the game is about and if you have a VR headset how you can best take advantage of it. So like I said, the game has both a single player and a multiplayer component. The single player, surprisingly to me, is more than just a tutorial. I mean, it is that as well. It gets you accustomed to the controls and the different classes of ships as well as the upgrades, but it's a pretty long single player campaign. Uh, a two mission prologue as well as a 14 mission campaign that alternates you between New Republic and the Imperial side, two squadrons uh, that are duking it out out in the aftermath of the events of Return of the Jedi. So there is no Vader, there is no Emperor, there is no Death Star, uh, but you do see some familiar faces from the classic Star Wars trilogy pop up as well as of course the classic Star Wars ships and designs, even ships like the Ewing from Rogue One. And the game is played in cockpit, so it's not a third person flight simulator, it's in first person. You are in cockpit, whether you're playing with a flat screen or in a headset, and you're going on these missions in the campaign basically to help the New Republic build their new super weapon. I'm not going to get into spoilers as to what that is, but there are definitely some new personalities brought in. You get to know your squad mates. There are some really interesting character designs and personalities that feel very much like they're from the Star Wars universe, as well as I said, the familiar faces as well. And there's a lot of backstory between these characters as well that become, that reveal themselves uh, as you play through the campaign. Uh, the 14 missions take basically about eight, nine hours, you can get through them all, depending on how fast you get through some of um, the mission briefings, the dialogue, how much you want to customize your ships and what difficulty you play it out. So you can basically finish it all in one day. And then the bulk of the rest of the game is in multiplayer. And in multiplayer, there are two modes. There's dogfighting, 5v5, uh, as well as this fleet battles mode, which is kind of like a, uh, if you play the game Nidhogg, kind of a tug of war style game where you have uh, your two capital ships at either end, uh, and then your kind of mid uh, range ships, uh, your, your cruisers, your corvettes, that then gets, and then also the dog fighting in the center. And then you push and pull depending on how well, each side is doing to get to the capital ships on either side to destroy that before time runs out. But fundamentally, so much of the game is about the dogfighting experience and about, for each side, four classes of ships. So I'm going to use the Republic side to give the example. So basically, you have your all-around fighter, your X-Wing, essentially, which is great for assaults, has a really good armament, uh, well-balanced shields, of course, on the Republic side. And then you have a more nimble fighter. Here it's the A-Wing. 
it's more maneuverable, faster, but maybe less durable. Uh, you have a bomber, the Y-Wing, which is great for attacking your capital ships. A little slower, but you can be very well armored and very well fortified with heavy weapons. And then you have a support ship. Uh, here the U-Wing that can cast shields, that can help your team hide under radar, uh, and basically resupply the rest of the squadrons. And between those four classes, as you build up a squad of five, you can then have a ton of customization. You can't think of it as just one ship, you think of it as a team-based battle and how that squad of five is balanced between each other with the different loadouts for each of the ships. And because the game is all played in first person, VR support works right out of the box. So uh, the version I got to play is an Origin build. So I load up the game in Origin, I boot up Steam VR or have Oculus Link running. And in the menus, you go to a VR setting and say toggle VR, which then changes the rendering of the game to output and make it work for VR, stereo VR, wide field of view, and it just works. And in the game, you, you can navigate the menus entirely, whether you're using keyboard or mouse, or a gamepad, or a HOTAS, uh, you can be in headset and navigate through all the menus. Uh, there are a bunch of VR specific options. For example, for comfort, you can do snap turning in the hangars and the mission briefings. But when you're in cockpit, it's there's no snap turning. It's the exact same experience as if you were playing on a flat screen, except now you can look around, you can actually move, you have full six degrees of uh, freedom to actually get up close to the instrument panels, to peek outside the, the, you know, the side of the windows, to look behind you, and if you're an X-Wing, see that astromech that's repairing your ship, or if you're in a TIE fighter, there's even a small little back window. Uh, all of that detail is kind of unlocked with VR free look uh, while you're still using the same controls that you would be using uh, if you're playing it on a flat screen, whether it's keyboard mouse, gamepad, or with a flight stick. And maybe the best way to illustrate this is to show you and not just tell you about it. So let's put on a VR headset and head in game where I can show you the instrument panels and tell you exactly how space combat works in Star Wars Squadrons. All right, so here we are. We're in the cockpit of an X-Wing and I booted up the practice mode. So this will let me switch between ships as well as spawn enemies for practice. But I mean, first things first, you can see it looks so good. The geometry detail, the textures here, the lighting, it, this, this is just an incredible amount of detail. It feels like it's really built uh, out here. And the interesting thing is there is no canonical you know, uh, design for what uh, and it's supposed to look like inside an X-Wing cockpit. So the team at EA Motive had to you know, really come up with something that would fit the aesthetic of the Star Wars universe as well as all uh, the practical um, uh, information being given. So let's take a look at the control panels. You can see I have uh, my throttle right here on my left. That's my hand there and it's one-to-one -one movement with the actual throttle I'm using right now. The stick is right between the legs there and doesn't actually move, but the ship moves of course. Um, but let's go through the kind of menu options. So the first things first, there's throttle and you can see that throttle indicator go up to speed as I slow down or speed up. And there's a sweet spot right in the middle that gives me really good maneuverability right there. And a the nice thing about, of course, using a HOTAS is I can have that muscle memory of where that sweet spot is uh, or speed up uh, without having uh, to always glance there. Um, that can just be a almost haptic um, uh, memory of where that sweet spot is. Uh, there's weapons, so you see that red bar right there. So I'm gonna fire some of these lasers and that gets drained. And then my shield is right over here. That's the green indicator as well as where my health would be. Uh, and I can adjust the shield to be forward facing or rear facing um, to really balance it out. Uh, power distribution is a big part of this game. So you see right here, you have the same color indicators with blue, red, and green for 
uh, for throttle, for weapons, and for shields, and then I can easily switch between them, prioritize either. So I can prioritize speed, for example, and that starts generating a boost. So you can see that yellow, uh, those five yellow bars, that's boost. And so if I speed up, I can hit a button to additionally boost, get real fast. But you only get boost if I send power to my thrusters or engines. Uh, if I send to weapons, then for example, I start building up a second um, bank of weapons. And when that maxes out, my burst weapons, I can just use them for longer before they need to recharge. And then for shields, of course, if I balance out the shields, then I get a second uh, level of shield as well. And I'm controlling this right now with the hat switch here, basically the directional pad on the throttle, so I can easily go left for throttle, right there, and then if I press down on that hat, it balances out. Uh, same with the menus, so I can activate a menu, for example, right here. So this is now my practice menu, and I'm using that same hat. Actually, I'm pressing a different button to then navigate and get through the different menus. So let's uh, actually deploy a squadron of enemies and show you what happens there. I can deploy a squadron of TIE Fighters and TIE Reapers. Sure, why not? On the center is my radar, so I can press a button to target an enemy. And you can see they pop in my HUD. I have the distance right there. And I put them right in the center of my reticule. So the reticule is locked to the ship. It's not head look for where I'm aiming. And now I have a missile lock and I can deploy one of my... One of my three auxiliary loadouts. For me, it's weapons, or missile, repair, and also uh, deterrent against enemy missiles. Let's take out some of these ships. One of the things I really love about this game is the lighting, and you know, this is a really beautiful map. You see you have a husk of a super star destroyer that you can fly through, and the lighting that you see on the cockpit, that all comes from the star that's right there. So it's very Star Wars-like, and that all the space battles happen in the proximity of a big light source, and you have these wonderful cast shadows uh, from the cockpit. Um, which then cast over you and they're dynamic. So if I turn, you can see they shift over the instrument panels. The hide and shadow, and there's so much detail. Uh, when you get messages in the single player, a hologram does pop up, and in headset, that hologram just looks awesome because it's in 3D, of course. And then because you do have the free look option, you can and turn around and you can see there goes my astromech right there. Give you another example. Here I am in the cockpit of a Y-Wing. And once again, very beautifully designed. You can look up and see the hull right there. Kind of look around. This feels very much like I'm in the cockpit of a, a fighter jet. Um, and you have all the same information that's displayed. So you have shields. You have your weapons, you have your throttle, power distribution, your, your uh, auxiliary items, um, as well as just uh, your radar and readouts. Um, and it's just, it's just really, really gorgeous. It's really fun just to look around and admire all this detail. Switching over now to the Imperial side, uh, this is the hangar. So there's a hangar that you get to a hangout in on both of the sides and there's just a lot of cool activity 
uh, going on. Just watch, you know, like shuttles land. Uh, you can inspect your vehicles, your ships from different perspectives. Get inside the cockpit, which I'll show you, and kind of just again look at that geometry uh, and launch. Or if you want, this is also where you customize your loadout. So you can go through your TIE Fighter, Bomber, Interceptor, or your support, your Reaper, and then you can press a button to go change your components, whether it's your primary weapon, you back out to your auxiliary, uh, active countermeasures, or missiles or mines to things like your hull and if your ship has it, things like your shields, your deflectors. So here we are, I've loaded myself into an Imperial Reaper. This is the support ship. And here you get a really good sense of just the different geometry, different shape of the cockpits. In fact, this is a, a two-seater here. And you can just see, like they really modeled all that detail, all those switches and lights, and it's a different amount of visibility for each ship. Here you can see you have windows and the side windows right there. It's a little narrower out front, but all that HUD information is still here in terms of you know, your throttle, your power distribution, your shields in this case, and health of the ship, as well as uh, all your auxiliary uh, loadout. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of how the game looks and plays a little bit in VR. And I keep on talking about the control, the input methods because this is a game where choosing your input, uh, I think will have an effect on how you perform in the game. I think a lot about this because they're not exactly the same. Uh, the Throttle and stick, I think, adds a ton to the immersion. You know, I, I get to actually flip these toggle switches on the stick here, as I would imagine an X-Wing pilot or a TIE fighter pilot would have to do to ping an enemy or, you know, adjust the shield distribution uh, for their ships. Um, but I want to say that the game might perform even better if you're playing with a keyboard or mouse, which I know is difficult if you're on VR headset, but you could kind of memorize the, the button mappings. And that's because the mouse, I think, gives you a little bit more precision. And it's not exactly the same, uh, both with the gamepad and the mouse. You're not doing one-to-one -one movements. Uh, you're basically dragging these vectors off from the center of your reticule, which then pivot the ship in the kind of pitch and yaw orientations. Um, but I, I do think that you can get a little bit more precise and it's a little bit more responsive when you use that mouse to kind of pinpoint and get that reticule right on target. Uh, with the flight stick, there is always a little bit of a delay as I'm pitching up or doing a, a little bit of a roll, especially the yaw movement always felt like a little bit of a delay where Maybe they're trying to simulate and, and balance the game out so you don't have this unfair advantage if you're using a throttle versus if you're using a gamepad. Um, but it's one of those things where you have to consider it depending on if you want to choose immersion uh, versus performing really well in multiplayer. There's no track controller input so you can't use like the oculus touch controllers or the valve index controllers and move your hands around and and push buttons or even use the sticks here for because first of all there's no button parity between the uh sticks and the buttons on these controllers and what you get on a gamepad uh but i would have loved to have seen some some track hand input i think a a mech game a cockpit game like vox machina does a great job of letting you see your hands but also grab virtual sticks and push virtual buttons inside those mech cockpits. And I get why they didn't, did it, didn't do it for this game, um, but it does take away from a little bit of the immersion uh, when um, you can't see your hands move. Your hands are always locked into holding that stick and that throttle. The gamepad side, the gamepad was honestly my least favorite of the inputs. I know so many people will be using gamepads on their consoles. And one of the reasons is the default configuration scheme is basically using each of these sticks as uh, one of the, the pitch or roll orientation. So you have the right stick as yaw and pitch, and then the left stick as throttle 
and roll. And I quickly remap that so I have my shoulder buttons as the roll, uh, and then the left and right of the left stick here as activating um, my power-ups. Uh, and that's about a little more comfortable, a little more responsive, and it's a little bit twitchy on the right stick, um, dragging that vector around to pitch the, the ship around. I always felt it a little, a little difficult to lock right on a target. And, especially when compared to a mouse. So I'll be curious how the balance works out with cross-play when PC gamers are playing against console gamers. And that cross-platform play, you can opt out of it. So you can say, I just wanna play with other folks who are using uh, my platform, uh, but you can't opt out of, say, playing uh, against people who are using a flight stick or using a VR headset. Uh, it's only kind of platform based. And flight sticks do work on the consoles. You can plug in a USB flight stick onto a PlayStation or into an Xbox, and that will work. And that probably, that's my recommended mode for play. Um, and I've been, I, I, I'm gonna always choose fun and immersion in this type of game over necessarily doing well, because this is the fantasy if this is why I built that cockpit rig was to you know have the fantasy of flying an x-wing and being in the Star Wars universe so my big takeaway at the end of the day is I can't believe how well Star Wars squadrons plays and how good it looks in a VR headset I mean it looks fantastic on a flat screen as well you know you can play it at 4k uh, or a widescreen and you're gonna see those amazing textures amazing lighting uh, but in headset all of the benefits of that and especially the sound is just so awesome it just feels like you're in a Star Wars universe. It feels like you're in Disneyland, to be honest, at Galaxy's Edge, going on Rise of the Resistance. That attention to detail is all there. And I have to say that I preferred playing this on the Valve Index over Oculus Link, even uh, with the Oculus Rift S, just because you get the extra field of view, the built-in speakers on the Index just help amplify all of that great sound design, and also playing at a higher frame rate, 120 hertz or even 144 hertz. Uh, I was had no pro performance problems running it off my GeForce 2070 Super. I was even using super sampling at 150% and maxing out all the VR-specific graphics options. It's a game that, as VR players, we feel very lucky to have because it doesn't feel like it was just bootstrapped on. It really feels like VR was something that they designed for and knew that a large number, at least a, a significant number of the player base, would be playing with. And that's why if you have that option, even if you're playing it on PSVR, PS4, I can urge you try it in VR. Just having the ability to look around and appreciate those details and getting that 3D built in because it's stereo. I think adds to the immersion, adds to feeling like you're in the Star Wars universe, and I think adds to the fun as well. So I'll be continuing to play this, of course, as Jeremy Kishore and the rest of the tested team get a chance to, and we're gonna build our squad and go have some fun in multiplayer. Uh, so hope to see you out there as well. And if you have questions about squadrons on this launch week, feel free to post them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them uh, if you're curious about how the game works or how it plays in VR. But thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in those dogfights and see you next time.